I'm not going to be long. I'm going to be very short. When I asked him, when I asked the father, what is it that I should be doing? And then he just gave me a brief that I should just be speaking about the power of the cross, which is the purpose of us to be here today, which is the purpose um, we want, as he just explained now, that we want to win more souls for the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, our scripture for today, I've got two scriptures. The first one is in the, first, in the book of 1 Corinthians, um, chapter 1, verse 18. If someone can read for me, please. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the messages of, of the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. And then you go for me um, to, the, to the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 reads as follows. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you. Father, thank you for your word. We are ready to receive it in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I know this is... Um, this is a message that we, we all know and we proclaim every day, especially when you have received Christ and you are the child of God. The reason why I'm reading the second scripture is because we want to rectify the foolishness that um, Paul is speaking about. He says that it is foolishness. Um, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. We want to rectify the part of perishing. Not to be scaring anyone, but to rectify that part. Amen. It's very strange the person that is, um, that is bringing these messages, both of them is being brought by Apostle Paul. If we all know and understand who Paul was, he was a man that was redeemed um, by the words that were spoken to him. He never walked with Christ before, but he met the Lord in his absence already. It was, he was already dead at the time he came to know who the Lord is. When I was sitting and listening and, and, and thinking, how am I going to put this scripture? Because I know we are in the house where our father dissects the word. But I'm just going to simplify it. So um, for Jesus to come down to earth, there had to be a meeting in heaven. And understanding what is it? What is it that needs to be done to redeem the people? because the earth was filled with so much sin. As much as the word were preached, as much as there was a lot of things that were happening, but we have, the, the people that were around at that time, they've already turned their backs against the Lord. There's been a lot of sacrifices that were given. The bulls were bent on the altars. A lot of things were done. If you read in the, in, 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 in the, in, in the Old Testament, you will hear so many things that people were doing. Some were cutting themselves and to give offerings. Some were giving money. Some were giving bent offerings. But I'm sure God, he just could not take the, the smell of all those bulls. But he wanted something totally different. And then because he loved us, and Jesus as a son, he understood what is the heart of the father. He had to sit with the father and say, Lord, here I am. You can send me so that I can be the sacrifice that you want. Because he understood the heart of the father that he wanted something pure that can be able to cleanse the sins that were on the earth at that time. So when, I'm, when, I, was, when I was looking at this, it reminded me of something that I came across. The principles of um, seven highly effective people. Um, it, it was, it's, it's an old book by um, Stephen Covey. Where he, he, where he explains what is it that is to be a highly effective person. So Jesus had to be proactive. He had to be proactive by lifting his hand and saying, Lord, here I am. You can send me. 
And then you have to begin with the end in mind. What was the end in mind that Christ had at that time? It was to save the people. It was to redeem us from the curse of the sin. He had to put first things first. What was the first things that he had in mind? It was still our souls. So that we do not perish like, the, like, 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 like what the word is telling us in the book of Romans. That it is foolishness. People that um, do not, um, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. He did not want us to be counted into those things as well. And then he thought win-win. He thought, okay, um, by Jesus doing so, he had to sacrifice himself. He had to sacrifice his kingdom. He had to sacrifice who he is. He had to sacrifice his identity. So by, so by him doing so, he will be winning our souls and also will be winning on the other side. We will be redeemed from the curse of the sin. So he had to do that. And the, second, and the other thing that he had to do, he had to seek to understand first before he can be understood. We hear in the Bible, um, when Jesus was still very young, he used to go and sit at the temple. We hear the scriptures where he was sitting and teaching at the temple. But before he did that, he had to be taught first. Remember how he was born. He was born through a virgin who had to conceive him, he, who had to conceive him supernaturally. You understand? So that was a totally different situation as well. But he had to understand that situation first before us we can be able to understand him. Because he, he, he is God himself, but he had to confine himself into that situation so that he can turn into a human so that we can be able to understand him. Amen. And some of the things that he did as well, he had to synergize. Synergizing is when we are working together. By the time he was already on earth with the people, he had to mingle himself there. So we are told in the Bible that his father that adopted him as, 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 as God has as commanded, U Joseph, he was a carpenter. So he used to work with his father. And what is that? That is synergizing. So he had to work with him so that he can understand what people were going through. Amen. And the last thing that he did is to sharpen the soul. When Jesus started his ministry, few people, they followed him. He had apostles that were, were submitting to him. And what is that? He's synergizing, he's working with other people so that the work can continue. So that we can be able to be redeemed. Amen. He prophesied that by so doing, it does not necessarily mean that himself as well. He is excused from what he came to Edward to do. As much as he was busy, whatever that he was doing, but he still knew that the time will come for him to be crucified. So that time when it came, it was not an easy time. He kept on prophesying it, but I'm sure his disciples also did not understand. I would also refuse to understand that there is something like that. But unfortunately, it had to be done. So Jesus had to go into the cross so that we can be able to be redeemed today. So that we can be able to be redeemed from the curse. So that we can be able to be redeemed from everything that is out of, that is out of the will of God. And unfortunately, his end was through the cross. Because that's what the word is telling us. And that's where the power is coming from. That's where everything was completed, where? In the cross. When I, was, when I was trying to understand for me, what does it mean? What is it about the cross? For me, when I was reading to understand what is this cross about, for me, I've learned that it is a place of forgiveness. That's where the first forgiveness has to start, at the cross. Jesus, before he, were, he, he, um, he was crucified on the cross, he had to forgive. Some of the people that he had to forgive was Paul himself. Paul who was Saul. In order for Jesus... Um, to, 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 get our, to get our souls and for us to be redeemed freely. He had to preach forgiveness upon the cross. He did not preach it, in fact, he walked it. In order for Saul to be gained to be Paul, Jesus had to forgive him. He might not say that, um, okay, Paul, I forgive you, but he said upon the cross, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. By so doing, he was forgiving the Paul as well. We all know that Paul, what he done, with the people that were worshipping the Lord. He persecuted them. Many were killed through his doings. But what Jesus had to do, he had to forgive him. In order for Paul to be able, now today we have the Paul that has written so many words. 
it's so much amazing that he is the one who is commanding that in order for you not to be foolish, you should be accepting the Lord and the Savior as your Lord. And how this is happening is through the power of confession. Jesus, is, Jesus and God is such a peaceful person. He does not force himself to you. But you need to make a conscious decision in your heart and allow him to enter there into your heart as well. He also had to forgive the betrayal of Judas by the time he was hanging on the cross. Imagine if Jesus did not forgive Judas. We will not be here today. We will not be here today. He had to forgive Herod as well. That was looking for his head when they heard that he was born. He had to forgive the Roman soldiers that were busy taunting him and say that if you are the son of God, save yourself. By the time he was hanging upon the cross. He had to forgive those soldiers that were busy putting nails upon his hands. He had to forgive them. It's so painful to forgive a person, especially when the forgiveness was not asked for. It's not an easy task. But unfortunately, the word commands us to forgive. God had to forgive us through the son, the one that he has given because of the love that he had for us. He had to release him so that we can be able to be, to be forgiven. Amen. And the second thing that I found out about the cross, it is a place, um, it, repre it represents a place of sacrifice as well. Jesus had to sacrifice himself to be hanged there. We are told in the Bible that as much as he was a king, he had to be born in the manger. Imagine being born in the stable of horses that smells of horses when you are a son of God. Where you could have been born in a, in a mansion and you were lying in the manger. That it might, it might be full of fleas and ticks and everything, but you had to lie there. Jesus had to sacrifice a lot of things. By the time he was hanging there on the cross, when I'm looking at him, I'm like, you're sacrificing your body so much so that we can be able to be born today and to be able to be standing here today. But he had to do it for the love that he has for the humankind. And then the other thing that I also found out as well as I was looking at the scripture, the other person that was sacrificing a lot, it was a mother, Mary. Mary had to sacrifice a womb. She had to sacrifice a dignity. Imagine being pregnant out of wedlock at the age of 15. Imagine the sacrifice that Joseph did as well, because remember he's got a reputation to, behold, to uphold. And then here you are, you must marry someone who's already pregnant. We hear somewhere in the Bible that O oh Joseph, there was a time that he even felt like running away until the angel came to him and said, Joseph, do not leave the mother and the child. That was, that was an utter sacrifice as well. Amen. And then we learn like also again that the cross is the place of reconciliation. We had to be reconciled to God through the cross. And, in the, and, and there by the cross, we saw an instant reconciliation immediately now as in now. The Bible tells us when Jesus was hanged on the cross, he was hanged with two criminals. He's not a criminal. But there's criminals that are hanging with him. But the other one was busy joining the soldiers that were busy taunting him. But this other one, because he saw and he felt something, we don't know what he saw. It's not mentioned in the Bible. But he felt compelled to say, this is the son of God. And then immediately at that point in time, Jesus told him that by the end of this day, me and you shall be together in paradise. There are so many people that saw by the time Jesus was giving, his, he was giving his last breath, that picked up that moment, this was a child of God. This was a son of God. We are not told what else happened. Maybe it's highly possible during that time at the cross, there was a lot of repentance that was happening. But the Bible is not telling us because they felt the power of God. Because the Bible tells us when Jesus died, um, the curtain, in, the curtain in, in, in the temple, it broke. Amen. And then so many people, I am very sure that at that time they repented and they came to Christ and realized who he is. As much as it was written upon um, his cross that uh, he is the king of Jews, 
on their side, they thought they were mocking him, but they did not know that they were confessing that he is the king of Jews. He was indeed the king of Jews, but he had to come and hang on the cross so that we can know he is the king of Jews. It's only when the darkness came, they realized that indeed we hang the king of Jews upon the cross. Jesus had to be humiliated. He was utterly humiliated on the cross. They have taken his clothes. The Bible tells us they even gambled. In some of the translations, it says they were, they were throwing dice upon these clothes. That was an utter humiliation. Imagine a child of God hanging upon the tree. The book of Galatians tells us that it, uh, a man that, that dies by hanging the cross is cursed. But Jesus had to take the curse upon himself and be the curse so that we can be relieved from the curse. That is the Jesus that we are serving today. We have been redeemed from the curse of the three by the death of Jesus. Something very funny they did not know. We are being told in the Bible that oh, Joseph, that uh, Joseph, the father of, 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 um, of Jesus, he was a carpenter. But the most foolish thing that they did was to hang Jesus on the cross. What did they use? They used the nails. What did they use? They used the wood. My father is a carpenter. I've seen him so many times. There are times whereby when he's busy with the, um, with the nail, sometimes he will hit himself with the nail. They did not know this person that they are hanging has got an experience of the nail. We are not told how many times maybe he might have hit himself with a hammer. They thought they are bringing pain, but they do not know this person has experience on the pain. They had no idea. They had no idea that this person might have wounds of the nails because he's used to it. Jesus was no stranger to hard labor. Jesus was no stranger to pain. Jesus was no stranger to rejection. He was rejected by his own people. He was rejected where he was born. He even says when he's teaching his disciples, that a prophet is without an honor in his own land. His own people rejected him. Whenever he spoke, they were like, this is the son of the carpenter. What does he know? When he healed the people in his land, they did not believe him. But it's only the people from other places, they believed him. They thought by putting him up the cross, they are humiliating further. They did not know that he is used to pain. That he is used to rejection. They thought they are humiliating him by taking off his clothes. But they did not know that greater is him than the one that is in the world. They did not know. They did not know the greatest power is not on the clothes. They did not know that the greatest power is inside him. By the time they thought that he's dead, now they need to take him off the cross. They pierced him on the side. Thinking still they are making mockery out of him. But they did not know by so doing. They are releasing water and blood for the church to be purified. They did not know. They did not know. They thought they are just killing another person. Very funny. Their leader told them, I don't see no sin on this person. But they continued. He even washed his hands and said, I see no sin on this man. But because they were stubborn, they still wanted to kill him. Thinking that they will win. I mean, who does that? Who does that and say, release Barnabas? As a known serial killer. For a person, just because you believe that he's blasphemed, what is that? You don't read the room and say, who is it that you are busy accusing? They do not know. They did not know. They thought by so doing, it is the end of him. Aibo, they did not know. The last thing before I sit down. The cross. It is a place of fulfillment of prophecies. So that the scripture can be fulfilled. David tells us in the book of Psalms. That they gave me food with gall and vinegar. And then in the cross, what did they do? The scripture had to be fulfilled. When Jesus said he was thirsty, they gave him water. They did not give him water. They gave him vinegar. But 
they did not know that by so doing they are fulfilling the scriptures they were mere tools to release the word of God they were mere um, they were mere vehicles so that the word of God can be fulfilled so that the church can be born they did not know they did not know the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm that the rock that the builders have rejected today has become the chief cornerstone by rejecting Jesus they did not know that they are building the church the Bible tells us we are built upon the upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets by killing Jesus and rejecting him they did not know that he is being a foundation for the church to be built today that is the Jesus that we are serving the book of Isaiah chapter 53 tells us that he was pierced he was wounded for our transgressions. By his stripes we are healed. Prophet Isaiah was so diligent and was so attentive to listen to the prophecies and the coming of the Messiah. He gave so many prophecies around him. So, so by the time they were busy um, giving him all the, those lashes, they did not know that by doing so that the church will be healed today. That will be healed of so many diseases. That the cancer will be healed by the stripes of Jesus. That HIV can be healed by the stripes of Jesus. They did not know that our poverty can be healed by the stripe of Jesus. They did not know by so doing that those stripes are carrying our healing. It was carrying a healing of so many things. It was carrying the forgiveness. It was carrying deliverance. It was carrying so many things. That is the power of the cross. By those stripes they put upon the, upon the back of Jesus. It is giving me hope of my salvation of my family. It is giving me hope of salvation of so many nations. It is giving me hope of salvation of so many people that are far away from the grace of God. That is the God that we are serving today. That is God that we are serving today. That he died so that I can live today. That he died so that I can have my full being today. He died so that I can live. That is Jesus that we are serving. The Bible tells us he died and then on the third day he went up to heaven. And now he's currently sitting on the right hand of the Father, doing intercession for us. He is constantly doing the intercession for us. Because you know, as much as he has forgiven us upon the cross of Calvary, we are still going to sin because we're human. He is constantly doing intercession because you know, sometimes we're going to forget that he's the healer. He is still constantly for, he is still constantly interceding for us because he know that we'll forget sometimes that he delivers us. He is making intercession for us so that we can live and live everything else and believe unto him. He is constantly making that intercession and reminding us that he is the king of kings and reminding us that he is the king of glory that is resurrected and risen in power and glory. That is Jesus that we are serving. That's why we stand and proclaim that he is the Lord of Lords. That is why we stand and proclaim that he is the King of Kings. That is why we stand and proclaim that he is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the Messiah. We are waiting for the coming of Jesus. But are we ready for his coming? Are we ready for his coming? Do we know who is Jesus that we are talking about? Do we know that he died and rose again? Do you know and understand what is his resurrection? What does it represent for you? That is the Jesus that we are serving. That's the Jesus that we are serving. He tells us in his way that is the light. He is the salt of the earth. What kind of salt that you need today? That Jesus cannot give you. What kind of deliverance that you need today that you did not find it on the cross? 
What kind of intervention that we need that cannot be found on the cross? There is no other pain and humiliation than hanging on the cross. On something that has been declared in the book of law that a person hanging on the tree is cursed. What else that we need from Jesus? He has done it all. He has paid all our sins. He has delivered us through his blood. That is the Jesus that we are serving today. That is Jesus that we are serving today. We are standing today and proclaiming that there is no one else like him. He died on that cross so that he can be given a name that is above every name. On that cross, that's where he received a name that is above every name. That's where you receive a name that he is a deliverer. That's where you receive a name that is a healer. That is Jesus, the King of Kings. That is Jesus, the Lord of Lords. That is Jesus, the King of Glory. That is Jesus, the Messiah. That is Jesus, the Son of God. That is the Jesus that we are serving. By him dying upon that cross, so many things, so many errors were rectified. So many errors were rectified. The betrayal was paid for. The pain that we experienced was paid for. The humiliation that you're going through was paid for. The nakedness in the flesh that you see was paid for. So many things were paid for. The fleshly desires that you cannot be able to stand for, they were paid for. When he died upon that cross, he gave revelations to everyone that who, who, who Jesus is. That's why we've got the book of Revelations today. Because when he died upon the cross, he left the revelations to these apostles so that they can tell us who Jesus is. We hear in some of the scriptures that his voice is like the sound of many rushing waters. And that is a revelation that we get through his dying upon the cross. When some of his apostles they speak of him, they say his eyes are like, um, uh, are like fire. We hear in some of the scriptures, they say when you're looking at his feet, it's like feet made of bronze. And that is a revelation they got to where they got it through upon the cross. What kind of man is Jesus? The one that was pierced for my transgressions and sinned. The one that was pierced so that I can live today. The one that whose blood when it gushed out, I received life. The one who portrayed and showed me that there is power of life in the tongue. We saw it on the, on the cross when he was giving the blessing upon the criminal that was standing to him. By giving him instant gratification that by today you will be with me in paradise. He is Jesus of reconciliation. He is Jesus of compassion. We hear in the, we hear in the Bible when, um, when he was about to die, he had compassion for his mother. And he said, dear woman, behold your son. Because he did not want his mother to be alone. He had to entrust someone to take care of his mother. That is the Jesus that we are serving. The Jesus full of compassion. My father was speaking about walking in love. Where do we get that love? We saw it on Jesus when he was hanging upon the cross. We saw him when he's saying, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. That is the Jesus that we are serving. The Jesus of instant gratification. The Jesus of instant reconciliation. But that you only do if you give your heart fully unto him and understand who he is and confess with your mouth that he is the Lord. Not for someone to force it upon your throat. It's for you to confess with your own mouth that Jesus is the Lord. As I'm about to sit down, I'm just reminded that how wonderful it is to serve Jesus. He will take you from the darkest pities of this world. He will deliver you from sins that you do not even know that existed. He's a Jesus that delivers. He delivers from any amount of sin. That's a Jesus that we are serving. May we be reminded today that his blood is still at work. That the water that gushed out of his belly is distilled cleansing us. 
I know we've heard so many times that so many places when you go there, they lay hands on the water because they understood what is the, there is power in the water. But unfortunately, if you do not have a revelation of who Christ is, you will end up taking wrong waters. But if you understand, you only need that water once because it has already gushed out on the tree. Amen. May we leave this place today in understanding who the Christ the Deliverer is. I know we have accepted him as a Lord and Savior. But when we leave this place, we may you go back and pray again for his revelation. For your own personal revelation. Because unfortunately, in the journey of Christ, you can never walk with someone else's revelation. You need your own personal revelation that is going to keep you. You need your own personal understanding that is going to keep you in the journey because it can be very long. Because there will be times where everything is silent. But the revelation that you have of Christ, that's what is going to keep you. He does not reveal himself the same way to everyone. To someone is going to reveal himself as a healer. To another person he will reveal himself as a deliverer. To another person is going to reveal himself as a shield and a protector. But if you don't have a revelation and you do not understand what is it that you need, you need to look deep into your heart. What is it that I need? He hears every prayer. He hears every cry from the deep of his heart. That's why he sacrificed himself and said, Lord, here I am. Send me. Because he knew what sins that we're going through. He knew what is it that we need. Amen. As we live today, we live with the understanding that we are serving a Jesus who's a deliverer. We're serving the King of Kings. We're serving the Lord of Lords. Jesus who died and rose again. And now we're seated on the right hand of the Father and is making intercession for our lives.